So let's try this again. So what we're going to be doing, ladies and gentlemen, is multiplying rational expressions. Now, when multiplying rational expressions, um, basically what we're going to be doing <laughs> is very much similar to the simplifying expressions, except we are just going to um, be applying like our rules of exponents. Now, there's two rules of exponents, if you guys remember, that we have previously discussed. The first was what we call the product rule, which stated if you multiply an exponent times an exponent, then you add, add the exponents. And if you take another exponent and divide it, all right, and then you, duh, then you su subtract. subtract the powers. Is everybody following me with that? That's what we went over the day one, right? And basically, we're going to be using those two. Um, and the third one, which we'll actually go through as well today, was if I had x to the negative power, to rewrite that as a positive, I would have to use the Reciprocal, yeah. So I'd write it as x to the positive m in the denominator. And if it was negative in the denominator, then I'd write it positive in the numerator. Everybody follow me? That's basically what we did day one. So in this example, ladies and gentlemen, what we're simply going to do is when I'm multiplying, I like you guys to multiply across first and then simplify uh, going down. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, all right, can I multiply 120 times anything? No. Can I multiply x to the fifth times x to the first power, though, right? would be, so I have 120x to the 5 plus 1, and then y, I don't have anything to multiply by y. Then I do the next one. Here, again, I don't have anything to multiply y by. I don't have anything to multiply 5 by, nor do I really have anything to multiply x by. But I'm going to want, when I order them, I'm going to want to order them with 5xy under each term. So I write 5x cubed y to the fourth. So does everybody see how I like rewrote them so now they are ordered under each other? OK. Now, let's simplify this. 5, now, now does 5, this says 120 over 5. Um, actually, let's simplify these first. So I have 120. x to the 5 plus 1 is x to the 6th times y divided by 5, x to the 3rd, y to the 4th. OK. So now my rational expression is simplified. Now the next thing I want to do is simplify this. So 120 divided by 5. Does 5 evenly divide into 120? Yeah. Yeah, right? It actually works this time. Since whenever the number's smaller, we want to see, can it divide into it? And in this case, it does. It goes into there actually 24 times. However, I'm going to continue writing it as a fraction just for right now, OK? Even though I know that number's 24. Because now I do these, and so I have x to the 6 minus 3 times y to the 1 minus 4. Does everybody see why it's 1 minus 4? Remember, y, y by itself is always really y to the first power. Okay. And all of that multiplication, all that subtracting <coughs> what I'm doing is in the numerator. So therefore, again, I have 24 over 1. x to the 6 minus 3 is x to the third. And then this becomes y to the negative third. Where are you lost? Where did I lose you? All I did was 6 minus 3, which is 3. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Hmm? Yeah, I just, I just simplified. x to the 6 minus 3 is x to the third. So you get 120 divided by 5? Right, which is 24 over 1. Uh, true. OK, you can really write one of ones right here. Now, since my y is negative, where should I put that y to the negative 3? denominator. So my final answer is 24x cubed divided by y cubed. That is my final simplified answer. Yes, Kelsey? Just so I remember that the 24 is always in the numerator. OK? So you don't have to. But a lot of times, students will get this like confused, and they'll put the 24 in the denominator. When I do 120 over 5, that's 24 over 1, or just 24. But I do it just to remind myself that 24 is in the numerator. 